got here? Samples from the factory? This is for me. All right. Hmm. Oh, N-Scale Comet cab car. N-Scale Comet coach. Oh, and the N-Scale Amtrak Horizon coach. I'm going to save these for later. What else have we got in here? Ah, the FP9. Of course, in N-Scale. I think we're going to look at these right now. Hi everyone, I'm Jordan Smith from Rapido Trains Inc. And this is our all new N-Scale FP9A locomotive. So the FP9 locomotive was the backbone of passenger operations for all the big Canadian railroads uh, from coast to coast. Now, actually, you know what? I'm probably going to mention that some panel was in the wrong place. So Jason really is the best guy to talk about the details on these. So uh, Jason, take it away. When, when, oh, right. Uh, John Riddell's new book, really nice. Um, I guess I'm talking to you now about uh, the FP9A locomotive. Okay, so the FP9A locomotive was introduced by, uh, by GMD, and this is GMD in London. There were a few made in the States at the MD, but the vast majority were made at GMD for two railroads. They were made for Canadian National and Canadian Pacific. So because of that, there's a lot of unique spotting features on the FP9A. The P stands for passenger. So it's got a steam generator unit. It's four feet longer than a standard F9. Um, F9s, you know, have the extra set of louvers ahead of the forward porthole. FP9A also has that. Even though General Motors of London only made uh, 54 FP9As for CNSCP, there were several differences from model to model. So uh, CN had several different classes of FP9A. CP had one, but then they were modified over the course of their lifetime. So let's look at the CN one first. This is the most standard. It's the, uh, the C and D class. You're asking why we didn't do the A class. Well, the A class had uh, different steam generator vents and it was later rebuilt. Um, and then the B class was one model, 6513. The C and D class was your typical, very common, 36-inch uh, fan FP9A locomotive. Uh, you can see it's got the extra louver in front of the porthole. It's got your far grills. Um, it's got your steam generator detail with a specific CN style steam generator cover over there. Um, and it's got winterization hatch. It's got all your grab irons on the front. And it's also got the bell on the roof and the M3H horn and the Sinclair antenna. Interestingly, the bell started behind the pilot and was moved by CN after a few years. Um, so these rarely ran with the bell uh, not on the roof. However, uh, we haven't cored the holes on the roof there. For those of you who are modeling the CN54, the bell will come in a poly bag and you'll be able to put it onto the roof if you want to, if you're modeling post about 1958-59. That's when the bell got up there. Okay, um, and then we've got the uh, D-Class. The D-Class is my personal favorite. Instead of having 36 inch fans, radiator fans, it's got two 48 inch radiator fans with a massive winterization hatch. You can still, still got the CN steam generator detail. They've all got cooling coils on the roof, very important. They were delivered with the bell on the roof and right after delivery they got the eyebrow grabs, they got the Sinclair antennas. So these are going to be delivered with all these details attached. Um, and, uh, and you can see the typical uh, separate grab irons on the model. That's, that's uh, become, becoming normal for, for uh, Rapido and scale models. But there's important little de details on the roof. Like you've got no uh, dynamic brake on the CN units. And what like even things like this here, that is a float valve. Because there's a water tank under here on the prototype. I've been inside the prototypes many times and you, you can bang your head on the big water tank up there. And that float valve is, it's, it, you know, if the water expands to a point, it, the float valve comes up and it does something, it shuts something off. I was explained to it several times, I can't remember, but the point is, it's on the model. You got the float valve on the model. All right. And then you've got the CP FP9A. There's numerous differences here. Now, I want to point out a key spotting feature on all FP9As is the fuel tank in the center. This has never been done before. If you have a look at the CN models, you've got the fuel tank in the center, you've got your two rear railers in front of the fuel tank and your uh, a pair of air reservoirs behind the fuel tank. Now compare it with the CP, same idea. There's your, uh, your, your fuel sump over there and this one's got an extra water tank underneath. Why do you ask, does the CP have a water tank underneath? 
when the CN does it? Well, the answer is the CP has dynamic brakes. So the dynamic brake is located where the water tank is located inside the CN model. Um, CP was also delivered with a whole bunch of neat stuff. It's got, for example, the icicle breakers. So when you order a, uh, a block or a script CP FP9, icicle breakers come attached. It's got a unique CP cooling coil. Check out the difference between the different cooling. There are different cooling coils between CP and CN. The CP models also come with a double stack uh, winterization hatch. And if you look here, check out, we've even got different steam generator covers on the CP and the CN. So it's all about having those differences. Also the grills, you can see the CN grills is the far grills and the CP is the vertical uh, slit grills. Um, and in, on, on the front, there are also subtle differences as well on the front between the CP and the CN. You can look at this here on the on the E class. You've got your little vent, your MU receptacle, and a little wind, uh, um, airflow vent. Um, on the CP, doesn't. On the CP, we've also done the later version, which would be CP eight inch, and the Via version. It's got an extra vent on the roof. That's that airflow because it was missing on the uh, on the like the CN added an airflow to get some ventilation. CP added it on the roof. Um, and then it also, rather than having the, um, all the icicle breakers, it's got like plated over areas there. Another detail on the CP is a working rooftop uh, Mars light that was on the later CP and the Via, that's plated over as well. So we've, I, I don't have a sample here of the later CP uh, model, but well, you can rest assured that we've done it. So there's four different versions of the FP90 that we've done. And most people thought an FP9A is an FP9A. Don't realize there's all these subtle differences. So what we've done is we've brought two competitor samples. I won't mention their names, but this one's a Japanese company and this one's a North American company. It's all I'll say. So let's start with the Japanese company. The Japanese company keeps on selling this to pull Canadian passenger trains. Let me tell you something. This is an F7, okay? Compare the F7 with the FP9A. The first thing you'll notice okay, is the F7 is shorter. This company recently put out a CN passenger train with a whole bunch of cars painted for CN, and it was hauled by these. CN's F7s hauled a handful of trains. They hold the Skeena and they hold the Hudson Bay. The vast majority of CN passenger trains were hauled by FP90 locomotives and also FPA4s, which we've also done, the MLW FPA4s. We made those in cooperation with Prairie Shadows. Those hopefully are still available or we'll do a new run of those soon. So you can see right now, one size does not fit all. If you've got the Japanese company's model, it is the you know bog standard model. There's no steam generator detail. Um, they, they, you've got the, these, these two bladder horns, which were never used in Canada. Canada had the M3H, the K5, uh, and then it, and the M5, and the K3L. Those are the four main Canadian horns. We never had these big bladders on our engines. So if you've got a model with big bladders, it's just because the company had holes in the mold they had to fill, basically, that's why, right? So you can see right now there's no comparison in terms of also, of course, detail. You've got nothing on the bottom of this one, and you've got incredible detail, including all the framing underneath, and, uh, and there's electrical cabling and all sorts of steam piping underneath there, and airlines on our model. Like, look at the rears of these units, okay? I mean, come on, come on square door window, really? We got the round door window because it's a Canadian unit. We got the backup light in this position for CN working, and we got the backup light in this position for CP working. What is this guy? What is this guy? It's just a stand-in. Even the, even the shape of the, the, the roof with like an angle, like that's not Canadian. We don't have angled roofs. We just don't have that. Come on. Now we're going to take the one that actually painted in a lot of uh, Canadian paint scheme. This is the FP9A in quotation marks by an American manufacturer. And what they did was they took their FP7 and they moved the, louver, the porthole and added the louver. And as you can see, that doesn't cut it, okay? The fuel tank on this American model is the FP7 fuel tank. It's the FP7 that dual battery boxes with single air reservoir. On the FP9A, we have the center mounted fuel tank and we've got the dual reservoirs. Okay, so that's a, an immediate difference right there. We can talk about the difference in detail and you can see right there that ours is, is a lot more detailed. And then our, our CP models, uh, the late CP and Via come with working ditch lights. You're not seeing this on the, uh, on the American model. Ours comes with, uh, with, with working uh, number boards, working class lights, etc. Those are all features of our, of our uh, typical repeatable models. But the most important thing is, I mean, even let, let, let's compare apples to apples, okay? Apples to apples, 
this is the uh, CNFP9A, and this is the American stand-in. So you've got your CN uh, horn, your CN bell, your CN Sinclair antenna, nothing, two bladders. All right. Then you've got your CN cooling coils, your CM steam generator. Even the steam generator layout is different because this is a standard model that's been painted up for CN, whereas this is an actual CN FP9A. So some people don't like when we make these comparisons with their competitors, but come on. If you're not going to do it right, don't do it. Now, Rapido can be, a, we, we all absolutely do stand-in models when it comes to passenger cars and accessories and stuff like that because we don't sell, every passenger car was different. But a locomotive is a huge investment. Okay, it's not right for, like, we're not going to take this FP9A model with its 48 inch fans and paint it up as an FP7 and say, here you go, it's close enough for you because it's in scale. We don't believe in that. All right, an FP9A has to be accurate. This is a Canadian FP9A. Rapido started in HO with the, it was our first locomotive, the FP9A, and we did it because an American manufacturer did a total botch job on it. And we said, it's not right that people are buying this weird, you know, zombie Frankenstein that's being called an FP9A. We've got FP9A, CN and VIA, CN and VIA, C, oh, sorry, CP and VIA, CN and VIA, and then these are done properly to the standards that Canadian modelers expect. So whether you're a Canadian modeler who's modeling the, the Canadian, the supercontinental, the ocean, the Scotian, the, the, uh, the Dominion, the, whatever you want, the, 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 the panorama, all of these wonderful Canadian trains, the Rapido, you need these models and it's time to go to your favorite auction site and sell your stand-ins. <sighs> okay, I'm done. All right, um, I guess I'm back. So. Now that Jason's taken us through the details, why don't we do a sound and light test on the FP9? So first off, we've got the headlight on function zero. We have the number boards, which are activated on function 10. Class lights, which are white, activated on function nine. And function 14, which controls the roof light. On FP9s in the later eight inch stripe scheme, these will be coming with ditch lights, which will be activated on function six. On these units, the roof lights had been removed. We also have the rear backup light on function 13, although this isn't quite working yet on our sample. And of course, to make sure you're compliant with the rules of the road, you've got function seven, which is the dimmer. Next, let's do an engine startup on function eight. All our FP9 models are equipped with a 567 EMD sound file, 16 cylinder. Next, we've got the bell on function one. Air horn on function two. Another cool feature we include on all our N-Scale models now is the flange squeal. Activate that on function three. As a passenger locomotive, these engines have steam generators and we've included that sound, which is on function four. Also, like all our HO models, we have the Doppler horn. Activate this on function five for a nice grade crossing sound. As with all models, we have the brake squeal that activates when you come to a stop. Okay, so thanks for joining me here for this quick look at our all new N-Scale FP9 samples. The order deadline is uh, coming up not too far away. We've got a little bit of time. It's gonna be uh, mid-January is going to be that order deadline. So you do have some time to get your orders in. Don't forget, if these models are a huge success, there's lots of other stuff we can do. Uh, we've got the FP7s, maybe we can do those one day. A lot of people asking for ONRs. And of course, the B units. Uh, we haven't talked too much about that, but there, uh, there's definitely the possibility we could do those at, uh, at some point in the future.
Thanks once again for joining me. Have a great day. Attention all hands, this is your captain speaking. We got mint chocolates, I'm putting them in the boardroom.